right, this is going to be a weird one-off show because if people, you know, maybe someone's been under a rock or something for the last few months, Monty, there was this whole thing with this player called du- Double Lift, right? He's a TSM, <laughs> AD Carry now. He used to play in your team for a while, you know, many moons ago now, Monty, when you were apparently like a fake coach for the cameras or whatever. I forget the details. <laughs> and obviously, in the meantime, he was on Team Liquid. He won a lot of championships. He came back to TSM under interesting circumstances. TSM themselves aren't the best team. And obviously, there was this conflict of interest, which is that he is in a relationship personal relationship, private relationship with someone who he also now has a professional relationship with because it's his, it's one of his bosses. It's the person who's the president of TSM, Lena. So under these circumstances, when some of this information came out, when as we are want to do on our community shows, we talked about the matter. I'll, I'll just go ahead and stress for the millionth time. Doesn't need to be, but we'll say it for the idiots. In no way did we ever impugn these people's characters. In no, never did we suggest that they'd done anything illegal either. All we did was point out that essentially, along like professional ethical grounds, there's a lot of question marks here. At a very minimum, it's the worry that things could happen is the, probably the bigger issue in everything yeah. before we even knew anything, right? Yes, of course. And uh, people sometimes struggle with the fact that there are two defini- definitions of conflict of interest. One of them is an actual legal one, and the other one is purely an ethical one. This, in my mind, falls into the latter category. So anyway, that's a long way of saying that despite the fact we just made ourselves sound so professional and so slick, we did in response <laughs> to these people fucking with our livelihoods and credibility, launch a, listen, figurative holy war in which we decided to make an art contest where people could create using their imaginations the very you know the very beacons of their soul they could join us on this crusade to just just fuck with tsm back basically and have some fun doing it that's the main thing i thought about it make some cool art pay people for making something cool have some funny jokes in there so a lot of people entered this contest we gave it by the end of two weeks i'll also say a massive shout out like initially we were just going to put a little bit of money towards it like we're not that deranged but then what happened is luckily there are people out there in the world who are like i will back this war and someone came to us and he didn't even want to be named he, and, that, and here's the other thing i'm not listen y'all will never trick me any of those people out there who like join my patreon and then the second they join my patreon 30 seconds later send me a message trying to get like one of the perks when they don't get charged until the end of the month I come from the northeast of England. You will never catch me. You will never trick me. Until that money is paid, you will never get what you think is yours. Because I know that you're going to get that thing and then instantly unsubscribe and it'll never do it. So what I'm saying here is this money is already secured, boys. This isn't like some fantasy where the guy said he'll give loads of money. It's already sent us the money. So it's all going to be out there. And as a result, like... The amounts were, well, I mean, it was basically added X to it. So I think it was 1,250 it went to for first place. I think it was 650 for second place. And then it would, I assume, be 350 for third place in this. So there's only going to be the top three here, but they're going to get big money, actually. I mean, I'm also, if at the end of this exercise, we think that maybe a fourth place or fifth place should exist, I'm not opposed to putting in some more money also. Well, I'll say then. It's been so successful, honestly. Like, it's been great. If that's the case, then I actually suspect, because obviously I've seen all these, I suspect that's probably going to happen because I can't lie. When we initially launched this, and especially when we launched it for $250, yeah, I thought there would be like, you know, five cool ones and we just pick between them. The problem is even some of the sick artists have sent in like multiple pieces each. So (laughs) it's going to be hard to narrow down to three, actually. Like, like I feel like we're going to have to have the ones we're really married to and then just come to an agreement on the other ones. So what we'll do is we're just going to go, like I've basically, I downloaded all the ones that were good or funny. Now, if you just heard that and then you watch and yours isn't included, then your feelings are probably hurt. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. It wasn't funny or good. Like, <laughs> like it isn't a charity, you know. This is actually an art contest. Art. So while I will say it, I obviously have a very subjective taste. I did try to be as fair as I can. So the ones that were like very low effort and not funny obviously didn't get in. The ones that were like, it was art, but it wasn't good and it just wasn't like that interesting. Yeah, some of them didn't get in. And one final note to say, the reason we're doing this as a VOD is just as I pointed out at the beginning of the episode, we also don't want this to be that this is like wrecking people's actual personal relationship. Like that's not, yeah. that's only a side component and it's only a component in as much they voluntarily made that part of the story. So at times, obviously that will be referenced 
referenced, but that shouldn't be the joke in the sense of like the punchline shouldn't be like, haha, look at these people's like lives being shit. Like that's not funny. Like, and well, I mean, listen, I won't lie. If I was in a bar, I might laugh. But the point is, in a professional context, that is not the aim of the art contest. So we've excluded those ones, even if some of those were funny or good. And also, I think it's important to note that, you know, part of the reason behind doing this is because memes are funny. And like this, even the the central conceit of it being a, quote, holy war or crusade-esque is... It's obviously hyperbole, isn't it? Of course. <laughs> intentional hilarity and hyperbole. Yes. And also, part of why it's funny is because crusades and holy war holy wars are stupid to begin with. So needless to say, like... Not really down with the entire like concept of the Crusades, but I do think that it, it it does stress the ridiculousness of this very act. And also, I think one of the the primary sort of metaphorical things you can take from Crusades is that it was sort of like a bunch of disassociated factions all joining up for a singular cause. Yes. And that is why this is funny. Not because the core concept of a crusade or any kind of religiously inspired conflict is particularly uh, acceptable. Let's put it that way. Which actually is funny because when we actually came up with the Holy War, the crusade element, and actually even launched the contest, that was before Richard Lewis just threw his hat in the ring and just got involved. Also, <laughs> it really did become, like you're saying, like the theme. Like it's it, That's the problem with memes is you got, you got to watch out. They take on a life of their own. They become real. So <laughs> I would just say, yeah, and, and also I'd add in, as much as people might be like, oh, it's a bit too far in it. The whole point is these people declared war on us with their actions. Like we're at least just doing it for fun. They just did it for real and just never, ever retracted any of the lies they said so what we're going to do is I mean, I they, still, everyone. they still yeah. haven't like publicly apologized They'll never do for that, basically lying about the fact that I was a coach many years ago so no, no. I mean my sympathy is sort of low for these people anyway what we're going to do basically is I've got all the images I'm going to warn people there's something like 70 that I downloaded <laughs> so listen I, I don't know what the runtime is going to be when you look down on the YouTube video, but it's, it's not going to be a seven hour VOD. So we're not going to go, it's not like we're going to a assess every metric of art. Some of them might just be like, huh, yeah. And then just move on to the next one. Some of them might be super sick and go to depth. So actually we'll start thematically appropriate. It is one that fits sort of the, uh, not necessarily the crusade angle, but certainly the apocalyptic hyperbole <laughs> of the, this particular battle. And I've also tried to put it in the actual... Uh, so what me and Monty are going to do is we have obviously these on our own computers and we're going to pull them up. But you can see the first one. I've had it on screen here. This first one was by a Tantalus on... Um, on Reddit, uh, basically everyone I have did it because they entered on Twitter. I'm just using their Twitter name, like the actual like username. So a Tantalus who people will have seen does a lot of League of Legends art. Did one where it was basically the people on that episode of Summoning Insight. So it was me, you, Richard Lewis, and then the fourth person is obviously Barry Idlevice, who. I mean, I don't know how much he's actually involved in the CSM hold, but whatever. You need four horsemen for the horsemen of the apocalypse. Money. I sort of get the angle. You had to put someone in there. And it, let's and face it, it, it would have only been local. local. Exactly. Local <laughs> doesn't get to be a horseman. Like he's too removed on this one, isn't he? Come on. If anything, if anything, Loco is like some sort of mule that like gets dragged along with everybody else. Maybe Loco is the mule that that Barry is is writing. But I do think that this is Begrudgingly. this was in, <laughs> this this <laughs> this was inspired by us referring to ourselves as the four horsemen on on the podcast. So sure. I like that he ran he ran with that. And also I will say, because this is one of those ones where because it's such a big piece, he did them all separately and he released each of them separately as he'd done them. Like I don't have them on screen here, but he even if you go to his Twitter, gave like each of them like a code name. Like mine was like sword or something, and I can't remember what the other ones yeah. were, but each each person had like a code. So he actually went pretty deep with the theme. Now, I know that he did other art that's gonna be in this same particular episode. So I'll just say, like, this is already a pretty strong content. I thought it's this amazing. was a pretty good one, actually. Yeah, I I love this one. I love that like Barry with the scales as a lawyer and like all the legal documents like coming off as he's riding his horse backwards. Like I think the the individual themes of like Yumi and Richard is like really interesting. Uh, I I love the fact that he sort of did more of the like wild natural fur uh, element for Richard, and then more of the like sharp pointy black knight for you and then more of like the crown and and bow aspects for me i think 
I think this one's amazing. I love it. Yeah, that's the other thing that I think is good. The art itself is good. And then also, he put in effort to the theme. Like, he actually tried to figure out, like, he made it coherent for a start off. And I can already tell you, listen, there's going to be some memes later, which are funny, but they're all over the fucking place. <laughs> some of them are just like a smorgasbord of, like, just ramming every, every meme reference Gumbo. there. Meme so, exactly. Some of them are like, exactly. That's the thing. Listen, meme gumbo can be hearty and delicious, but it's not the best meal in the world, is it? It wouldn't win, like, the best meal contest. I'm just saying. So, right. So, this one is yes you know as i was saying before what i like here is i didn't intentionally do this it's an alphabetical order of like how i named them and then whatever the name of the person is but this next one is very much more in the meme quality angle it's not the highest quality produced piece it's very simple actually and essentially he's just taken the theme of the avengers and this is someone called tamas hitch on Twitter, and he's just put our heads like very simple pictures. I mean, he's even put fucking like I'm I'm a cutie pie in the background. That has nothing <laughs> to do with it, and and cop as well, and a few other people. So like you know, some of it has no relevance to this whatsoever. But you know what? I thought this was just like one of those mild ones we could just say, ah, oh, yeah, not bad, and then just move Indeed. on. Maybe it was funny. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was all right. A little bit mean to use that really old picture of Lena, but whatever. I mean, it is a picture on the internet. That is what people are want to do, believe it or not. Right, so the next one is by someone called All Nerd Delado. And as you can see, he's obviously heavily also gone into the Crusade theme here. I thought what was that? what I actually liked about this one was like it's not like the art is the best quality art in the whole contest, but he has his own style. He's definitely gone like he's got his own approach to it. What do you think of this one? I I like the shading and sort of the just the red being the only color as well as like the the you know the pencil elements. I think it's it's pretty fun. I enjoy. He's it. also done a really good job on those like ripped up TSM flags. So I yeah, appreciate the, the attention to detail there. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like the light of God shining through the clouds from above. That's a nice touch. Okay, so for the next one, it's yet another Tantalus entry here, and you can see. Listen. This guy, one of the things I already knew about him from Twitter, actually, it's actually how I got to know him as a person, like an artist, was he's one of those artists who can whip these up in ridiculous time for the actual, like, quality of the drawing. Yeah, so, awesome. like, this was one of these ones where I think he put, like, three entries into this. Like, the I actual four, quality. Actually. He has the, the quality book, and the the one of you as the, as the Crusader as well. So, sure. this is the second out of four, I think. But the quality on, uh, like, just the image detail here is, like, ridiculous. Like, this looks like professional comic artist. Like, this is very good. <laughs> yeah, I also love the fact that he can do so many different styles. Like, if you compare this style, which is more like a political cartoon, to the last one, which is more, I don't know, like, uh, more animation style or looks much more badass. Like, this is more, more caricature. But he's, like, all the faces are super expressive. I know that there is, and he also does a lot of depth. Like, I know that there is some meaning to this chess opening, but I'm not a chess player, so I don't understand it. But he was talking about that on Twitter. So if you if you guys are interested in that, I know he was discussing it. But I love the sort of, like, Reggie and Lena as the king and queen, double lift, just sort of pensively. So he's just not saying anything. He's just like, doesn't know what's going on. Like, that is, that's a very double lift move. Yeah, I like that. It is. it is. I think he really can that. that. Dardock, uh, Dardock just in the, in the, uh, in the cage. And then the pile of jungler skulls, I assume, sitting yes. above the TSM side. Yes. Again, see what I mean? Like this, this, the thing with his style of art is like, you can't just look at it on the surface value initially. You have to think what's like the motivation behind some of the includes. So I, again, this is like a very strong contender as well. I have to say this one's straight fire on its own. All right, this next one is going to introduce you in case you were unaware when I gave that preamble that it doesn't have to be good, always, Monty. It just has to be funny. So I listen, I can't lie. This made me laugh. It is just a clown-inspired TSM logo. So, it's childish. I won't lie. <laughs> it is. But what I love about it is like sometimes it's just the simplest solution is the best. It is, just it? to take the clown emoji and then just turn it into a TSM logo. By the way, I've already seen this probably like several dozen times because a bunch of people have just taken this and started using it. So just to yeah, do it. You know, yeah. part, part of part of you know the value of art is whether people can really identify with it and whether it, it's reproducible or can, like especially memes, right? You want them to reproduce like crazy. And like this I just know, I just know this is going to be used for forever now. So I just listen, mate, listen, that's <laughs> the thing I love as well. The second they go out of a world's group or the second they throw a big game in a final, this will be posted, obviously, which is great. <laughs> I even feel like this is one of those ones where 
Listen, maybe not right now. Cloud9 channel's not the place for it. But in the future, if we had a Twitch channel of our own where we publish stuff, this might become an emote. That's all I'm going to say. That's <laughs> that's what I'm feeling, you know. It feels like it would be a good emote, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I think it would be an amazing emote. So shout out to what? Juan Roca Grande underscore Juan underscore Roca Grande for this on Twitter. I, I think this is... This is wonderful. Like, it's yes. great. <laughs> Perfect example of something that's just simple execution, but he nailed it. Okay, so as Monty mentioned earlier, listen, the the Atantilus guy isn't the entire art show, by the way. This just, he just happened to be very early on, and whatever, he na- whatever his image was, I just did like a name, basically, that sort of described it so I could see it myself. So here's another one he did. This is how next level the guy went. So this one also has, obviously, the Crusader theme, but he's done, like, a coloring book, and this is how you know you actually know what you're doing in art. He hasn't coloured it all in, idiots. He's only coloured in part of it to show that you buy it and you colour it in. Now, listen, I have to say as well, this is where, even though it's baller that we put all this money up for this contest, I can't lie. If we get to the level I'm hoping we are at in 10 years, when something like this happens, we'll just put this into actual production and you guys can buy it and colour it. Like, that's where I want to be one day, Monty, where I can actually do things like that. I think we can do it now, actually. I don't think it would cost that much. Maybe I should look into that, but we'd have to commission him to make the entire book. Like, he only did the first part of it, but there's also yes. a world where we could, we commission a bunch of different artists to, like, make it, and then we put it into production. And then we have a separate contest of who can colour it the best. Yes, I, I I think this is amazing. Maybe that's something we do next year for the first anniversary of the victory of the TSM Holy War. Because, by the way, guys, you think this is going to stop? It's never going to stop. I swear to God, every May, we'll do a different celebration of the victory that we had over TSM. Because we won the Holy War. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's not ongoing. It is over and decided. So I think that this might be a good commemorative pro- product in a year time. Now, I am not down generally. Also, speaking. though, I've got to say, though, Monty, you have to, we have to point out, though, to be fair, like it was going to be a really long, drawn out war, but then they basically turned the nukes on themselves and just self detonated. <laughs> exactly. Like, I know. <laughs> I know. No, there was the thought that this might actually be difficult to win <laughs> yes. over a long period of time, but they just. They just surrendered. Well, they didn't surrender. They basically just sabotaged themselves. So I don't know. Shit's, yes. shit's dumb. World is dumb. Sometimes it works out in wonderful ways. Um, I, I will say that while generally I'm not like I'm not down with like contacting their sponsors like Lenovo and, and like trying to get them to drop TSM because that's just some bullshit. But I do appreciate when <laughs> like things like this that aren't directly attacking the sponsor, but just having the sponsor Lenovo on the front of it is just hilarious. It's just funny, it's like, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, I agree. That was also another thing is like similarly in the same way as on the personal angle, we're not going to go like ridiculously unduly deep. Also, it has to just be incidental. The whole thing can't just be like fuck Lenovo or fuck TSM's partnership. Like, listen, they did their own damage to that. Like, that was I just want the the conflict of interest known in the community. That was that was my end goal, believe it or not. But whatever, we'll move to the next one. Yeah, they don't need they don't need our help ruining their business. Right. So this is another entry, which is kind of like a coloring type angle it's comic book basically it's supposed to be like a i'm gonna guess like 60s 70s era comic and it's just like you know a brand new series is announced and obviously this is the tsm holy war it's not the craziest piece but you know as like lcs in it as the reddit i assume there's supposed to be people on reddit who are angry tsm fans or something me and you were on it (laughs) i actually love this one i think they nailed the style of the era yes and i think it's I love the fact that they put like the creases as if, as if it is a sort of old piece of paper, like an old comic cover. I think even the design standpoint, this is amazing. Even on the TSM part, they've purposely done that thing. Like when you used to have like a micro dot printer, basically that sort of effect on the TSM banner. Whereas obviously this is digitally created. Like he didn't have to put that. He's done that as if it was a real piece of paper from like the seventies or eighties. So yeah, I, I think the actual execution nails it on this is pretty well done. I love this one. I love it. And this one was by someone called Lover Sarcastic, who I believe will appear later. He also had another entry that was pretty good. So we'll, we'll, anyway, pretty good. Though we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Right, this next one is actually one where he initially did this solo one, and then you're going to see a bigger version that has Monty and I think Richard Lewis as well. And basically, this was by Mikachu, who's a pretty new artist who come around, but he's done a lot of League of Legends and esports related stuff recently. Um 
I, I just have to say, like, even as soon as I saw this, I was like, this is pretty fucking strong. If anyone doesn't know, like, that head is actually my avatar on Twitter right now because, like, <laughs> it's the idea that not only did he nail the whole angle, like, obviously it's pure coincidence on our part as well, by the way, that I actually am English as well. And obviously half the Crusader, like, theme within this is just St. George's Cross everywhere. But I just love the little detail of all the, like, banners of the evil in the background <laughs> being TSM. And I'm just, like, some Aragorn-type figure, like, for Dardock! <laughs> charging towards them. I like that angle. So obviously we'll see the full one in a minute, but I thought this was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I love the realism of your face. I think it's a really good likeness of you. I guess I wish like the rest of the body and everything was more realistic because it, it was seems a bit kind off, of yeah. flat. But I will say that I think he did that stained glass one later, which I think is amazing. Yes. Like I think that one, because maybe it's more <clears throat> of a style issue where his style is more like it works better in like a flat plane or something like that. But I think it worked much better that way. Yeah, two other details to add as well. One is, like, that's one thing I will say about the Mikachu guys, because he's pretty new to this. And in fact, it just came from him doing, like, a random picture on Twitter that I liked, and then he made an Instagram and stuff. He's not, like, a guy who's a full-time artist. Like, some of these other people, that is their job. It's their passion for many years. So I imagine he's leveling his skills up. I'll also add just an interesting detail, because I've seen he does this on all his pictures. In the bottom right-hand corner, he must be a Christian person, because he always puts a different Bible verse, actually. So I'm not sure what Mark 217 means, but I've seen on some of the other ones, he tried to sort of put ones that I guess had thematic value. So what does that actual verse The the Hebrews one from... uh, That was good, yeah. I think was really good. So Mark 217, the King James version of the Bible is on hearing this, Jesus said to them, is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. No. There we go. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, listen, he's not wrong. He's sort of got, I like the theme. See what I mean? There's, there's, there's levels to this shit. There's levels to this shit. <laughs> Also, I'm going to say as well, I just enjoy, by the way, as an aside, that so many creative, intelligent, funny people also think TSM is scum. So <laughs> we're in good company. Listen, you can judge a man by the company he keeps, right? Exactly. Right, this next one is another Crusader one. This is by someone called Lime Boy Slim. And it's basically just me fully in war mode. I'm surrounded by the hordes of TSM fans. <laughs> and here's the thing. This is like, this is a pretty early entry, I have to say. It might even have been before like we upped the prize pool. But listen, it's not going to win, let's be real. But I appreciated like the element of it. Tried to go with an interesting black and white kind of angle on it. I actually think I like, the detail on TSM logos is pretty good as well. I, I like the fact that it looks like sort of an etching, um, which I think is really cool. Uh, it also looks like, if people don't know this... Um, one of the things that many people do in terms of old medieval like stone and gravestones is what you'll do is you'll go to like one of those places in England, like a gravestone, and then you'll take like a piece of paper and make a rubbing. Like tracing the, paper, yeah. Like a Some rubbing of, of the yeah. carving. And uh, it kind of looks a little bit like that too, which I think is a nice touch to to the period. So I enjoy it. Yeah, that's another thing, by the way, that, listen, it's not like it gets you bonus marks that makes you win, but another angle I appreciated was people who part of their creativity was trying to even recreate it as though this really was some, like, medieval art. So yes. in its own I appreciate the people who went to that level of attention to detail, you know. We got music, too, which is, like, crazy. Right, so this one is by Oz Jack, and basically, I just titled it Devils, because if you look at some sort of, like, I don't know what the actual art is from. Is it, is it supposed to be from like Paradise Lost or Dante's Inferno or something? It looks like Paradise Lost to me, like an etching that would have been made with Paradise Lost, but that's just my guess. Now, listen, I will say this is obviously one where in terms of like execution, he's mainly just done like minor Photoshop edits. Like he hasn't done the whole art himself. This is obviously a classical, like, again, probably like 19th century piece of art or something, but it gets the job done. It's, you know, it's one to just pass over and say, yeah, not bad. Right, this one is one where, surprisingly, there weren't that many like this, actually, where people, believe it or not, Monty, so many people went with the Crusader angle, which shows how we really set the table with that. We sort of set the atmosphere. Not a lot of people actually thought to use League of Legends the game, whereas in this scenario, we're obviously like, that's supposed to be me as Garen. You're like, are you Tarek, is that? Tarek, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. And then... Lena's just evil. <laughs> I don't know if she's even supposed to be a cat. I assume it's just so someone evil. And she's got all the hordes of TSM again, just sending them out away. So I appreciated this one. I like it. I do. I do like the fact that symbolically we're represented as defending the game. And 
I think what Lena did in this entire thing was try, a, instead of actually taking responsibility, just try and send the hordes of TSM fans against us. Uh, so I think that's fun. I like which, I like the the analogy. Which, by the way, just to just to put it out there, like motherfucker, this shit started in 2014. Like the idea that the TSM hordes are getting records now, it's like that scene in the Lord of the Rings trilogy where it's like, you have no power here. It's like, yeah, like, it's too late now to send the TSM hordes. They've already been coming for the last six years. Yeah, we're, we're kind of jaded at this point. Yeah. So anyway, oh, that was obviously, it's, he's going to put his name on this one, it's Loser Mangaka. And actually this was an image that was like one of those huge images that I actually had to like resize to put on here. So again, it's probably not going to win. It's just an all right one. But I thought, yeah, it, it had its own charm. Right, this one is by Chixel, and you can see what it says on the screen. Lena, I, I assume, like, listen, mildly making her a clown because she has a clown's nose, says, it's not my fault, no one wants Dardock. Clearly speaking on a phone a few meters away from Doublelift, who's busy playing, and even better, right? Just for no reason at all, he's just lost this game. That's why he's been <laughs> defeated. And then Smithy's just, I think, I think that's supposed to be Smithy's just on it's the screen. Expensive. And then if you see on the uh, in the background, this is the detail people will miss, all the dead TSM junglers behind. And on the bottom, Dardock's picture is just like falling <laughs> off the wall. And then obviously, you know, Lenovo's just recording everything over the top. Like. <laughs> I, like, I like the fact that, that like uh, the implication is that he has X Smithy's picture as his background that's like showing on his second monitor. Because Devilift has said in the past that he was the one who didn't want to kick X Smithy yes. from Team Liquid, and so he's probably pining after X Smithy at this point in time, especially since he's uh, going to TSM in this uncertain jungler situation. So this has some. This has some. The reference game is pretty funny here. Oh, and I'm, listen, I'm going to go ahead and guess after this last split. Double F really appreciates X Smithy. You know, he's not one of those people who was out on him. He knows what that guy did to help him in his career. And I just, again, I, I like the fact that it was the last detail I noticed was the Lenovo robot just thumb, recording over the top of the door. Like, <laughs> it's just a silly little deal, but I appreciate it. <laughs> right, so this was the one we promised already for Mikachu. It's all three of us. He's incorporated the other one, but slightly different. I noticed there's a few details different. So now we have Richard and we have Monty here as Crusaders. Again, I actually agree with what you said the first time around. The thing is, the detail on the heads is really good. Like, he's got good likeness there. The body parts, like, some of that does look like he just was like, well, whatever, we'll draw a body in here. A body will do. That'll do. I, I like the fact that he added the the halos to this one. I think yes. it's a nice touch of contrast. Yeah, let's not listen. Oh, also, Roman's 116. Let's look that one up. Oh, there we go. I mean, this is Paul, so this is going to be some straight fire and brimstone type <laughs> righteousness. I already know, so come on. Is this going to be like, I come with, let's see what it says. Come on. All right. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty intense. That's pretty intense. <laughs> I will say, though, that's also where, again, to reiterate what Monty said earlier, we don't actually subscribe to the ideology of the Crusades. But I will say, since this is purely fictional, I appreciate that he has gone out of his way to make clear that we do have the grace of God and that we are on the right side. <laughs> you know, there's no there's no debate to be had on that, am I? You know, there's, we, well done. You nailed it. You nailed it entirely, my friend. This is a pretty good one, actually. Certainly up there. But I'll have to say one thing, warning to everyone who's early on in this episode who hasn't like had wowed us completely. There are some really good ones in this. Like there's one coming later where a guy did a whole comic, which I won't give the spoiler to if no one's been on my Twitter. It's so good. It's unbelievable. Like I actually think this guy like, is not, he's, he's almost certainly going to win, but we're going to wait to get that. I don't want to spoil that one because when I saw it even, Look, I am, I I am like, salty that I'm not in that comic. I will. That is true. That's the only angle that is a bit whack. Like that's also where Thorin's bias came in because obviously I saw it and I was like, this is the fucking best shit ever. <laughs> I never bothered mentioning it. Yeah, it's only me and local that are in that one. But yeah, we'll get to that one. We'll get to I agree. If I were you, I would have been that one. Right, so this next one, more in the vein of a meme, but if anyone knows, this is actually from my favorite book, which is Dune, God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. And listen, it's not like, again, it's one of the ones where like the effort on it's not that high. He's just taken some image from like, I assume like a classic 70s cover or something. And he's just photoshopped on. But what I liked is just that he took like, because the thing that's great about that book, if no one's read it, is because the, the, I won't give away any of the plot, but because the person who's sort of the narrator or telling some of the key elements of the story is someone who has a very different mind state to anyone else, 
the, uh, the author basically put himself in that position. And so when he would make these like prona profound pronouncements and insights onto it, it potentially a long period of history, you actually started thinking like, these are almost like real, like, holy shit, this is like someone, as if someone had seen like the whole, an empire rise and fall. So he's tried to take something thematically that would fit to what's happening here. So this is almost like, you know, if we were talking about the conflict of interest he's put here, the seeds of a terrible dependency had been planted. If a disaster threatens, my Lord will come. It's what this person, who's the Cloud Nine person actually here says, because obviously Cloud Nine are the good guys here. You can also see, if you haven't noticed it, we've got Reggie, Doublelift and Lena, the classic participants of this affair. And just below me, the God Emperor, who again, were no spoilers for the book, but I'm loving the fact that I am the God Emperor. I don't know why you're not in this one. Why well, are you going to be a character? I mean, the whole funny part of this too is that the concept is that a human has fused with one of the sandworms to like reach a new level of existence. And so I appreciate that you're a sandworm. <laughs> I think By the funny. way, <laughs> I, I did say earlier on, like obviously trying to know all spoilers. So I'm hoping anyone who hasn't read that book didn't just it listen to really what he said there. Like if that spoiled it for you, if someone starts saying this is from the fourth book and uh, if you haven't read it and you were thinking, well, I want to read that, you should have turned the video off then. Like, I can't be held responsible for that. And I have also, to say... it's not really a spoiler. It's just more the concept I know, of it the is. entire book. <laughs> yeah, also, you, did, you didn't say who the character was. And I'll also finally say, <clears throat> at least we even have some consideration for it. One of the areas in which... As an, as an outside observer like the rest of you, I really enjoy Richard Lewis, is he full on just says, fuck anyone complaining about spoilers for shit from decades ago. And he will just say shit on his show, like what happens in a movie, like a twist on like the usual suspects. He'll just go and say what happens, mate. So at least we actually have mercy on you guys and try to hide it, you know? I, I feel like if we're talking about books that were written 40 years ago, the statute exactly. of limitations on spoilers has expired. Exactly. Just like the statute of limitations on excuses TSM comes up with, seemingly. <laughs> oh, that was by that other one was by someone called Gabe Ferguson, by the way. So this one is by someone called Normies97. And essentially, it's sort of like a comic book cover, I would say. I think it's to, like a uh, like, Star Wars poster. I think that's what it's supposed to be with. Oh, you think it's font. supposed to be that angle? Yeah. Uh, oh, because of the because of the Holy War text, I guess. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's and the same font. They, uh, Reggie, like, kind of is like Darth Vader, and also the classic like '70s Star Wars posters do have like all of the characters with like the collage style. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's the thing. This is another one where this is why actually this contest was also fun. Listen, if this was like pure technical skill, yeah, this guy wouldn't win. But I actually appreciate, like, again, thematically, it all fits together. He's got his own style, his own flair to it. I, I thought it was pretty well. Also, if you haven't noticed, by the way, that's Dardock with like a drawing, the knife thrown into it at that point in time. The only thing is, though, the one area it did fall apart is, as you say, Monty, Reggie's in almost some sort of like a Chinese emperor slash emperor Palpatine type thing. I've yeah. got the crusader angle. Lena's got snakes around her as well. She's like Medusa or something. And then you've just got a gun and you're some sort of like, well, like you're like time crisis or some shit. It says no fucking. And then it has the pass <laughs> on my shoulder. Okay. It has like a side, like a no side through two people fucking, which I think is funny, but like. <laughs> That's also I, one where it's no, so the line. Stuff, I do you know. think it's, it's funny because it sort of points, it like it pokes fun at me in a way that like my stance is that I'm some sort of. You're a Puritan. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to prevent anyone from having sex sex in esports which by the way is somebody who has sex with someone else in esports is pretty funny so i enjoy it i think it's funny sure and, and as you say there i actually think it's more to make fun of monty than it is to make fun of other people in the scenario it's not a mean one put it out i think you no, just put no, that no, in I as think, a detail yeah i think it's i think it's it's mocking me which i think is fun <laughs> Right, so this next one makes use of the aforementioned TSM clown emote. <laughs> and it takes, I'm assuming that's The Witcher, right? Yeah, I it's from The Witcher 3. You're as Geralt. And so what you're doing, if you haven't played The Witcher games, is he takes trophies from the monsters that he kills. Um, so it's you with a cutoff head of a monster trophy that is actually just a TSM clown face. And this, by the way, he's actually stolen like the head from the Mikachu yes. guy. This was by a guy called Farsighted. Like, what I like about this one is, again, level of execution not high. He's also stolen other people's art to make his <laughs> art entry. So you're not going to win, my dude. I'm just going to tell you right now. But well, you know what? It's still still funny. I still appreciated it when I first saw it. I gave it a retweet. I do. I do like the fact too that you're the Witcher, as in it implies that you are some sort of independent force that is tasked like a mutant that is tasked with taking down sure. monsters so i think thematically it's a good idea 
And also, listen, I've, I watched the TV show of it at least. I, I will say also, I also do play an outsider role in which many people despise me actively yeah. within the community, but hopefully acknowledge that I have a role that is necessary and someone's going to do that job. I actually think that <laughs> as a symbol, it's actually pretty apt. I enjoy it. Right, so this one is by Janny Gox, and this is one where she's actually someone who all of her art is always pixel art. It's trying to replicate, which, by the way, is absolutely after my heart, because when I, I used to play computer games in the late 80s, early 90s, this was the level of graphics. Like, it wasn't much better than this. This could have been, like, the loading screen. So, obviously, in this scenario, you've got all the people involved there. We're all, like, superheroes. You know, there's, instead of a bat symbol, there's this flaming TSM symbol. I'll also say, by the way... This is what's interesting about the different art styles. You'll notice that each of us like fits different art styles better. So I've got to say right now, Richard looks banging in this one. He would be a sick like villain in a, like a fucking dystopian 80s like video game. He looks baller as fuck here, doesn't he? It, he looks really good. <clears throat> This is also a reference to the show because I started off by saying that the signal had been shown into the sky. So right. I have already made kind of the Batman reference where... Where it sort of falls apart for me, I have to say, is like the idea is behind the the symbol is that you shine the bat signal and Batman yes. comes, not that you shine the TSM signal and we come. So, you know, maybe maybe a little uh a little bit incoherent on that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do agree. like it. So, okay, interestingly, we have another League of Legends themed one. And again, I am Garen in this one. This says like TSM Holy War, and then has the info there. Right, here's the thing. People might know this is a famous difference between me and you. I don't know or give a fuck about the law of League of Legends. So you have to actually explain to me why they keep doing me as Garen. It's because he's like some sort of hero specific in the game thematically or something, right? So basically, I mean, I don't really know the lore either. We would need Loco for that. But Garen is basically the sort of stereotypical hero character, you know, warrior with a sword. And this one was by Toby James Art. And I have to say, cool. actually, yeah, this looks like it could be at the beginning of like a Riot cinematic. I mean, the joke that they'd ever make a cinematic about me in a Holy War with TSM. <laughs> by the way, it is in itself an amazing premise, but I appreciate it. I also, I also like the subtle detail of all the, I'm assuming the TSM like ghouls behind me just <laughs> looking out of, the, out of the grassland and I'm ready to just wreck them, presumably. And look at the actual like lens flare he's put on that fucking... That Jewel. crystal or whatever, that's pretty legit. <laughs> like, the more you look at this, the better it gets, actually. <laughs> I like your expression and sort of the inner glow from your eyes, personally. Yeah, this one was a meme where he's obviously, again, taking some crusade art. But the thing is, this is where I say it. You don't always have to be the best artist. But if you make it funny, we'll put it on as well. So this is one where, just to, if you guess people can't see, in the background, <laughs> someone's just saying, lol, by Dardock, as like <laughs> someone is thrown over the castle wall. <laughs> Then there's um, Bjergsen just like, help, jungler! And then <laughs> then, then my favourite detail is not only is Lena like fucking Lenovo, but the actual picture of Doublelift is that famous one in the bottom left when he was like passed out or something and drunk. Because <laughs> if people don't know, when he was in CLG that first time, they were fucking wild in that team. Like some of the footage they took of each other, like, you know, like fucking Chouster just drunk in like a nightclub on the floor. Like this was the days before professionalism. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty. It was a, it was a good time. Uh, I love the picture of you as well. That's pretty legit. And then also, if people haven't noticed because this might get missed on the wall. They crossed out all the junglers as well. It's on the well, bottom right part. Also, in the very background, by the way, you can see Sven from when he was on TSM when oh, he did doing that the taunt, uh, where yeah, he's like Jensen. looking out or uh, yeah, the taunt at yes. uh, Jensen. So that was a nice touch, I thought, the, in the very deep background. Right, I'm just going to say it at the outset of this one by R. Shibatsky. Listen, this might be my own personal bias. So I think this is one of the best ones in here. Like, this really looks like it could be. Like, what it reminds me of is the sort of books that, listen, no one would actually buy themselves as a child, but they'd have in school that would be like a night theme or something, you know. It's the sort of book they want you to read that's half educational, half a fantasy story. But the actual cover for this looks exactly like that style. It looks straight fire. Uh, I think like the Holy Wars text as well. Um, it's definitely Star Wars because you can tell because of the RS being connected. So it's definitely supposed to be that same sort of Star Wars style theme with the villain looking in the background. Like I love the shading on Reggie's face. He looks uh, so evil there, but in a baller way. He actually yeah. looks sick. 
Yeah, he does look sick. I love Richard Lewis as a chair. <laughs> By the way, can we just say this right now? Because a lot of things also emerged out of this, Monty, that came from people's psyches. Like, why are you always the religious character? Whereas I'm just like the cell sword guy who's just, just killing people. And then Loco, un- listen, I understand this one, is always some sort of jester slash clown slash like just comedy sad, element. Sad clown, like oh, the hearts and broken dreams jester. And then I love, I love the creativity of incorporating the tsm logo or the tsm into the helmets yes um yeah this one's pretty fun i think and also by the way i like the way they've done that very stylized tear on his eye there as it was like on one of those like you know almost like a drama mask or something you know like yeah that's like, again like i say the actual like this just looks so authentic like it looks like it really could just be a really awesome like pencil drawing that someone did in a notebook and I, like i say i actually think reggie looks badass here even though he's, he's one of the scott reggie Benjamin's is story i think reggie is definitely the best part of this i think i think it's really really good in that way uh what bothers me a little bit is just the the shield like the perspective on the shield is is weird it does so, look like it's too close to my body doesn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but everything else is good right so this one you can see it on the screen yeah, you, this is one where you might have to zoom in a bit because you need to look at some of the stuff on the right. It's the battle for integrity. And obviously you have, at supposed to be SBRs on the left there. We're the people who are the, you know, the in, warriors of integrity. And then what I love about this one is this is where people also listen to what we say. So if people know, one of the ways I have characterized TSM fans over the year is uh, over the years is as a zombie death cult. It's the idea that like, they, if they're they not even pure evil, the followers, they're just mindless. They're just like, and they follow. And in this scenario, Lena is some sort of like Gorgons. evil goddess or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgon. She has like the snakes for her hair. <laughs> and they're all just doing her bidding, just just coming forwards and then we're, we're battling them. I like how Double Lift is next to her, just like as this tiny little man, <laughs> uh, just playing a video game on the laptop, <laughs> oblivious to what's going on around him, which is pretty accurate for him. Also, as you said, like one of the themes that that went through uh, was like me as the Pope and you as like the the holy warrior on the crusade. Another theme that I noticed is is you with the sword and me with a bow, which I also find interesting that people picked up on that. I'll also, yeah, I'll join you on that as well. One thing I appreciate is that everyone actually, because here's the thing, most people actually like Double Lift. He's a pretty cool player and a good guy. Like so so what's <laughs> fun is people have generally not been too mean to Double Lift. He's just like he is in real life. Some just sort of like semi-innocent cool bystander. Guy. Like, I just want to play a solo queue, please. Like, you know, as he was in the video that came out, like, uh, should you really be saying that, love? Like, they can hear you on the stream. Like, he was even trying to do his best, yeah. you know, like he knew there was something afoot there. He was just trying to play a video game. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him. <laughs> oh, that's weird. What was the journalism one? Hmm. It's weird. an animated GIF. Oh, right. I see. Yes. This was one where I actually can't show that then. Basically, here's the thing. I'll, t- I'll just describe it to people. There's one by someone called Narwhal, which I don't think it was going to win. So it's not criminal. We didn't show Good, it. Though. But yeah, you can go and look it up. Like, look up the guy. It's N4RWAL on Twitter. And what he did was, again, listen, he knows his audience. If you're anyone who's ever played like a, a, a NES game or something on that era, it's pixel art. And what it is, is it's like me, you, evil Lena. And then it like the sword has like journalism, literally like, you know, like <laughs> crafted into the very middle of the blade and requires two hands to lift off. So like, again, I just, well, the thing is, it's actually pretty sick art. Like I wish this was the beginning really of a good. video game that I was like, press start to play now. Like, I would definitely press start and play it, start playing now. I think, I think like what, what this makes me wish is that somebody had actually made like a simple, like side scroller, eight bit game where you could actually play as you and me. To defeat TSM, that would be amazing. Right. So this next one is by Touch Me Sama, and it's another night themed one. This is more like a a more simplistic art style, I'd say, but again, similar scenario. And this time I noticed though, he's made you more like you're what are you like a warrior cleric there or something like that? Something like that? <laughs> I think I'm just a jester, man. I think I'm just enjoying it. I'm just sitting there laughing in my silly patchwork costume. Oh, right. Actually, I mixed that up. I thought you were the one on the left for a second. I guess you wouldn't have glasses, would you? I think that's Barry on the left, actually, ah, with the okay. scales of justice, if I had to guess. Okay. And then, I, listen, I don't know how deep he went on this, but 
I am standing on a TSM flag draped over a Lenovo box. <laughs> so, listen, I'm actually sorry to Lenovo. You didn't do anything wrong, guys. You just gave them a fucking PC. And definitely your PC is not faulty and makes people just record shit. Like, that's just some a couple of idiots who don't know tech didn't set up the fucking PC correctly. Like, you know what? Lenovo, if you want to if you want to turn this around, mate. Give me a fucking PC. I'll make loads of straight fire content and explain how like Lenovo do the Warriors of Integrity or something. You know, we can we can do something here, baby. We can turn this around. <laughs> <laughs> Lenovo did nothing wrong. They didn't. Yeah, that's the saddest part of it. They were ironically they should be the ones that feel the worst about this, Monty. They just probably paid millions to a company that just bodied them now. So. Right, this is one where this must be someone who actually does know my career pretty well because he's taken this angle, which, listen, I actually haven't done in a long while now, but famously on the first CSGO major in 2013, because they said, wear whatever you want and you didn't have to wear suits, yeah. I wore a Lakers Kobe jersey. So I've got the Kobe jersey and then he's just taken the art of Akira where, listen, again, spoilers, if you haven't watched fucking Akira, I think it came out in 1993 <laughs> or something. Like, you missed the boat on that one. You're going to get it spoiled. Like, one of the main battles, obviously, is, I won't say who the character is, but someone becomes, like, a giant, deformed mutant from, like, psychic yes. power. And so in this case, that is TSM, which, to be fair, listen, once upon a time, me and TSM, we could have gotten along. We could have been friends. But you know what? If they turn into a giant, deformed mutant that threatens the very game and integrity that I love, I absolutely will have to destroy them, figuratively, metaphorically, in a video game, allegedly. What, you know, I think I'm fully covered there, right, Barry? Bring him in. <laughs> I, I love I think that this is thematically appropriate in the same way that The Witcher one was, where you, I like the Akira analogy, and I love like you on the Akira motorcycle with the grenade launcher or whatever. Yes, <laughs> Right, this is where, I will say this, Monty, there were other people who attempted this particular theme because it's just such a classic one to go with. But the rest of them did low-quality memes. This person, if you look, actually put some effort into the art. They properly put their heads on. So he's obviously taken the classic Last Supper image, very, very famous piece of art, and then he's tried to put all of us as different characters. I will say the one area he's fucked up there is, is like... The action, the only angle he didn't do, because to be fair, you'd have to be like a student of religious art to be able to do this, is he didn't fit the actual characters from The Last Supper with like what they'd be doing. Like, for example, like it's not like, like he's basically put Richard Lewis where I think that was like what, I think that was like fucking put Judas James. or something. Uh, it's James. James. Um, technically, Double Lift is Judas right here. You can tell because he's he's clutching the purse full of silver. Uh, right. at the table but i mean obviously <coughs> I think that's a good analogy because he wouldn't be judas in this situation like double lift isn't really betraying anybody yeah, yeah. so i don't know i wasn't like reggie is andrew uh you're jesus i am matthew in this so you know i think it was artistically done well and i like the integration with the background of the world championship for league of legends but yes. at the end of the day the symbolism isn't really there Oh, and by the way, if anyone's watching this episode, like, taking these memes a bit seriously, aren't they? Are, are you unfamiliar with the personalities that are doing this show right now? <laughs> are you under the impression, right? Bear in mind, if we weren't completely pretentious assholes who imagined things were much more than they are, League of Legends has still been a bloody sandbox like six years ago where everyone was just like, ah, oh, that new champion looks fun. <laughs> Wonder if Koreans will ever be good. Like that's where we pick this motherfucker up. So listen, you've enjoyed the journey so far. Yes, we're going to go way overboard analyzing fucking memes. That's the art contest you entered. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, if we didn't know a lot about history, then we wouldn't be able to even come up with the holy war analogy in the first place. So you have to at least step up your game as well. Now, speaking of stepping up your game, this one is just a meme. They didn't even put in that much effort. But if you know the meme, which I don't even know the anime, it's that one JoJo's adventure or whatever. I've never watched it. But listen, I've seen this meme used before and I appreciate it. It yes. is definitely funny because the meme is me and Monty are stomping out TSM as Lena watches on drinking wine. So you're thinking, oh, what's she going to do? She comes and joins in, of course, because in the end, she was the one who gave TSM the last kicking in the liver that made it completely keel over, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just think it's a, a great application of this meme and makes me chuckle. The next one is another classic meme format. It's who's actually the name of that comedian? I forget what his name is. You know, the guy is the one who was also like, I've got to like reach these kids or whatever. Or like, that was such a brave, why would you say such a brave and controversial thing? It's that guy, I think he's from Saturday Night Live or some show like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with what his name is, or, but I recognize him from pop culture. And this is a very famous one where there's two I think images. It's Sandberg. I think that's it. But anyway, yes, continue. And basically, the image is always like, 
someone shoots the person and then they say, why would, why would someone do that? So in this case, she shoots TSM and then the joke, which by the way is perfectly executed, is why would Lenovo do this? It's like, yeah, exactly. Like, it wasn't Lenovo, it was, it was you. you. If anything, you shot him, TSM and Lenovo. Like, it's only a simple, you know, this is a, just a chuckle one, but I appreciate yeah. it. Listen, this just gave me a nice chuckle for a minute and I definitely retweeted it. So don't worry about that. By the way, as I'm changing images, I will just say, you know what? Every now and then we give the game plan away just because why the fuck not? Yes, the other reason why this contest was a great idea is because then we just drip fed you motherfuckers yes. memes that just kept this in the public consciousness for weeks at a time. So, <laughs> Including you're why you're watching this video right now and why we were talking about how this could continue annually in the future. That's part of that's part of winning is just keeping it keeping it alive, you know, through memes. The most effective way to keep it going is just to cause people to laugh. So this next one is basically just, it's a type of a logo as though we had our own show or comic book and it was by Andrew Duke and it's nothing crazy, but I just thought, you know, he did a nice job with the style of the logo, the TSM Holy War. It reminds me of like the heavy metal magazine style yes. of, of logo or like a, a heavy metal album cover. It's cool. So as I said, Lover Sarcastic entered more than once. Here's another comic one he entered. This is the TSM Holy War. And it has, um, it says, they say that they're not doing anything wrong and that everyone in the city knows that they took Dardock for a walk anyway. And then it's just them going, TSM, TSM. And it's loading up <laughs> like a catapult <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this is it's uh, it's in the the sort of same style again as one of those older comic books and looks sort of like Prince Valiant, like you might see in the yes. newspaper. So I think the style's really cool. I think they're yeah, that's actually the style they were going for. Like a newspaper panel, right? into a, a catapult. I think that's what's going on with a bunch of other shit. They're throwing him into the catapult to launch. And by the way, just because this is the detail that doesn't initially draw your eye, Richard Lewis is there in the bottom left corner. That's his glasses. He's the one looking, like, we're actually looking almost from his perspective. You might miss that one. That's supposed to be his glasses there. Although I will say, he wishes he had full hair like that. If anything, his hair's more like that, like painted on like Ray Lewis's or something like that. <laughs> right, I'm just going to tell you right now, even though... This is like something which would only be really high art for like a 14 year old. It's really funny because it's a cartoon where basically there's all this weird angle, like basically in the top left, <laughs> top left, she's like, shut the fuck up. And then Lena's just saying like, that's not up to me. Like, for example, no one wants to pick up Dardock. It's not my fault. And then in the bottom left, Loco, who, by the way, that's a pretty good likeness. And by the way, oh no, Doublelift is also like sweating profusely. And then D Loco is like, what the fuck, Lena? And then I'm just like. Dardock. I think that's Dardock. Oh, really? No, no, it's supposed to be Loco because of his okay. ear. I believe that's like the drawn right. out ear, you know. So anyway, okay. in the bottom right, I'm obviously saying, I fucking told you so, ha <laughs> ha, which isn't the greatest likeness of me, but that is, listen, we didn't do this on an episode, but you can imagine, can you even imagine when I woke up and saw that video? Like, I can't even believe this. Like, is, is it, am I actually secretly, like, is, it, is solipsism real and, and the whole universe just comes out of my mind? How has this happened? Like, this is unbelievable. I also appreciate that the central part of this is like double lift, just sort of being surrounded by all of this <laughs> bullshit that he didn't ask for. Yes. <laughs> he also looks cool as fuck here, by the way. This is a great draw to him. <laughs> oh, by the way, that last one was by Alessandro Migne. Now this one is the one Monty referenced earlier. So Mikachu, this is his best one that he entered. This was one where it's supposed to be a full on stained glass window of this premise. It's got the RIP Dardock up there. It's got double lift here. I'm not actually sure. Is that supposed to be like an apple or something he's taken? Like, I don't. He done that? That's is it the, the world? Part that confused me. Is that <clears throat> is it the world? Like the the coloration makes it a little bit odd to to for me to know what it is. And also, you can tell he's used photo reference here because I refer I recognize all three of the photos of me, you, and him. Like he's taken that one of you doing like the Buddha pose that like everyone's used a million well, times. A, Richard it's, Lewis. It's a, it's a blessing. It's making the blessing pose with my okay. hand. Um, and I love the fact that the TSM, the people are jumping off the side into like jumping off the cliff and they're in the shape of like TSM. The TSM yes. Letters. I love that it says Rip Dardock, November 2014 to Lena's. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the Bible scripture then? Because as we say in the bottom right, it's Hebrews yep. something. So what was the it's, reference on that one? It's, it's Hebrews 12, 11, 
which is no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it, which I think is an amazing Bible verse for this situation. No, that's actually the thing I also said is like the extra layer is like he clearly picked it thematically to actually reference what we were talking about. So this is just one of those ones that's just you quickly look at it. It's all right. It's me and you as, as Crusaders. Bizarre, like few Crusaders holding hands. I'm not sure why that's like stock footage that exists on the internet. And then the bottom it says, the old Crusaders, Monte Cristo and Thorin, searching the Holy Lands, brothers in arms again. <laughs> We've reunited. There we go. Right, this one was by With Steep Force, and obviously, I can see where he's taking the inspiration here. He's taking it from where someone did that Sasuke version of Monty it's, when Monty it's was not wearing Sasuke, the headband. It's Sasuke's Isn't, brother. Oh, okay. Is the, of, someone else from the Itachi clan. What was his name? Like Uta, Uchachi or some shit like that. Wasn't it? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't know Naruto, so it's like hard for me. But people were saying that it's like really accurate, and so I guess Sasuke's oh, okay. brother like joins some. A, you know, uh, sort of exiled group of assassins from the clan and then, but actually has righteous motives or something like that. Right. Um, I don't know who you're supposed to be or Richard is supposed to be. Some in this. Of the All I know is yeah. fucking hilarious, but I just don't know the reference. Yeah. It's, it's also very well done. Like put it this way. You, like I haven't, I've watched like some of the episodes in a route or like maybe the first 150 or something, but like you don't need to know the storylines instantly know from the art style. It's supposed to be in a route or, and obviously like it references a lot of the angle. I think it was just one that was just well done. It was well executed. I do like about that one though, that Richard has the Reddit logo. I think the nicest touch is like his headband has the Reddit alien. The snow. Right, I had noticed it, that. Yeah. And it has the line through it. <laughs> Cause I consider like yes. he's banned from Reddit. I think that yes. one's super funny because what I learned was part of this assassin's clan is they wear those headbands, but they have like the slash through their original clan. Yes. Oh, like, right. To show they've sort of abandoned it or whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. This next one. I think is well, this is one that I think straight fire because what he's done is this is one by someone called Yes Okay Fine One and he's taken the Holy War and he's put the conflict of interests and obviously I am put as Thorin Oakenshield from the Hobbit and then you are I'm not actually sure who you, I think it's just you and your when you did that uh, what was the who was the commercial you did for when you did that so um, what that was was it was a, an Overwatch final where I'm holding a Reinhardt hammer. And they replaced it with this axe that I have. So it's a picture of me where I'm holding like a Reinhardt hammer from one of the OGN uh, Overwatch finals. Oh, right. I mixed it up with because you had a similar outfit when you went and did that like Grand Budapest style, like Pumerad or whatever it was. Uh, I was yeah, thinking yeah. he was referencing that because you had a similar no, kind a of outfit. reference me from an Overwatch final. Ah, right. I'm actually surprised there weren't more like this one from Jordan Ross GD. Because there wasn't actually that many sort of movie posters like there was a few but it was mainly i know it's all like art whatever like this is one where like i wouldn't say it's the best but he's putting like a decent level of like effort like to the photoshopping these are all classic photos of all of us as well even the one of like uh like like he's done that thing that like everyone does on the announces they've picked a picture of reggie where he's just looking gormless as fuck like yeah what's going on like but listen pictures like that exist of all of us who've been on the internet for long enough and obviously it seems appropriate to them and then this is the part that i love is this the you know remember on every movie in hollywood where the real work is done is in sort of the line that's like the line that below the name yep. and where it just says there's no escaping the truth that is actually straight fire i love that part that's actually brilliant i mean the, I, I love these kind of movie posters because of all the easter eggs you can put into them like best fake news award because it has like the you know the the yes. laurels like they they often do with some of these films so best fake news award from tsm gg best twitter drama spring post season she definitely wins best twitter drama for spring <laughs> season like we, we know that one and then i love the uh i love the subtext underneath like thorin and monte cristo present a high school drama studio <laughs> <laughs> production in association with lcs as a clown fiesta the tsm holy war casting by poor choices music by <laughs> noise gate <which> <laughs> noise gates pretty good I to so say. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> costume or was a costume designer plebs international edited edited by lol reddit mod. <laughs> <laughs> keep going the next one's good as well the next Production one's true. designer denying facts produced by dardox career <laughs> <laughs> there we go this, one, this one's fire too director of photography travis gafford 
<laughs> which is obviously a reference to the picture of double lifted Lena making out, which I have no yes. idea why they would have let Travis post on the internet. Oh, it's weird, ever. isn't it? Uh, co-executive producer Lenovo, executive pr producer. It's not that hard to not be. A that is one of my favorite details <laughs> as well, though, because that was obviously the other part, by the way, that everyone seemed to miss was that like. Listen, if you're going to paint yourself as the victim and you're going to make it that everyone's being mean to you and you know, all this sort of thing, don't then yourself go and be a massive dick to everyone on the internet right after you've made like your pronouncement of like your your philosophy on life is it's not that hard to be a dick. Like you were kind of a dick to us. Think about that. <laughs> uh, the director of photography, Travis, Travis Gafford. That's strip fire. It just kills me. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing I will say, by the way, because I know, I think like Dom got in trouble from that. I think she said something on the Pokemon podcast about that, where she made it seem like, and then Dom took like one of my photos, like the photo that you allowed to be put onto the internet. I, I can't, I can't handle this because I that's not like a paparazzi it. or something, you know? I keep <laughs> saying this as somebody who was in a private relationship with somebody in esports for years that never escaped to the public. Really, what's not hard to do is just not have a public relationship and Frankly, everyone was very, you know, respectful of Susie and my relationship, regardless of my personal relationship with that person. And we never would have referenced it, even if I had known about it, had they not made it public. So you kind of bring it on yourself in a way. Yeah, that's actually the detail that very much gets missed, is if you actually know the way people with ethics work in esports, when we know something that is solely private information, like in this particular case, here's the thing, in Monty's case... I think we probably wouldn't have referenced this, actually. If they'd have kept their relationship secret, we would have said something like, well, it's a bit weird that they just came back to TSM or I hope there's nothing going on. Like, you could have... Yeah. It, there's ways you can get around it when you know these things. I will say, from what they've done, it would have been outed anyway as a result of this story because it actually now would be in the public interest. That's When you are a public figure like that, that would then be a relevant piece of information because of the conflict of interest. But I agree. They could have essentially made this much more of a non-story by just not making it all public. Like, there's not really a reason you had to do that. <laughs> there's no reason and you had to make it public at all. So this next one, which is another one by Yes, Okay, Fine, is basically, it's not the best drawing ever, but it's sort of like, I'm, I'm taking this as like, it's sort of like, am I supposed to be like Jesus or some sort of religious figure there? Oh, well, it's you're you rather. You're, you're holding, so I'm, I think this is a baptism picture of me, so I'm baptizing, like cleansing a TSM fan. And then the, they're the, definitely the, a TSM acolyte who's done yeah. a pilgrimage to sort of like cleanse themselves of yeah. their sins. And you know, it's like, it's the sheer, it's the rueful glance to the floor in acknowledgement <laughs> of what they've done and penance for their <laughs> years when they just like, in yeah. Supplication. You know, listen, they just, you know, they just used to love Bjergs. And there's a lot of people in that boat, Monty, where they're like, well, now I'm really conflicted myself because I, on the one hand, enjoy Bjergsen and Doublelift, but I also hate scumbaggery liars and people who just promote conflicts of interest while denying they exist. So I get it, people. I would suggest the following course of action. Continue to watch the game and enjoy Doublelift and Bjergsen. I also do that. But just don't become a TSM Ultra and start trying to burn the entire scene down because we've brought this shit up. <laughs> It's quite easy, believe it or not. As as the aforementioned Lena made clear, just listen to the words of Lena. It's not that hard to not be a dick. And then the same person did another one where I assume this is supposed to be me as Moses with like the yes. Ten Commandments here. Yeah. Just basically just laying the law down on TSM and all the other people. I like to imagine all those TSM fans are the ones who are like, what, what is a conflict of interest? And besides, even if there was one, then wasn't it more before? Not that there ever was one anyway. And if there was, what business of yours is it? And are you just jealous? And also, like, you're just doing this because you hate Lena because she's a woman. Like, I, I imagine that was all the people. And I'm just like, listen to me. You will listen. This is the law from God. And well, then listen, I, be it upon your own heads if you turn away from that at that point. I, I like it that <laughs> you, are, you are presented as somebody who is taking divine ethical guidelines and teaching the people which listen in some ways that was what i've been trying to do <laughs> just the difference is though i will say thematically i'm definitely not that much of a moses character though like i think moses was something more of a pious man than i was you know 
Although, to be fair, as I change to the next picture, if you want, to, I'll, I'll show you how you crowbar some thematic element in that wasn't even in there. In some ways, though, I, I am like Moses because Moses obviously was just supposed to be a poor boy, you know, but he managed to get into this rich family. That could be like the way I came into CSGO and became one of the biggest there. And then obviously he left all of that behind just to become a humble Hebrew and attempt to escape it. In the same way as I came from the mighty Counter-Strike, one of the great esports games, to shit a little League of Legends and just said you know what these lost fools they need someone here to lead them and you know what guys as much as we've been through the wilderness we've been through all the troubled times i might not get to the promised land with you but i'll lead you there okay and i'll leave you right upon the doorstep and then just go straight back to see us go and probably just say fuck it all just, you know <laughs> anyway the next one is gonna be it's another one where it's like a comic a cover and this is another one where the guy actually he has his own art it's a, this is a style by the way a secret to art is a lot of people aren't technically brilliant artists. Like it's very, very hard to be able to draw like super freehand, etc. So the style, what you need to do if you're not a great artist technically, is get your own style and make it coherent. If you can do that, it'll have its own meaning. So it'll still be expression. So you can see not the greatest drawing, but it's the TSM Holy War. What I like is the way Lena, who admittedly it's not she's probably the weakest of the caricatures here, but she's just saying, why is this a problem? Just bemused, you know, by the very premise of a conflict of interest. And then it says, um, foreign as Pope Urban. What is this referencing? Is this actually so, referencing a movie? So, no, 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 no. What this is referencing is uh, Pope Urban was the, in charge of the First Crusade, and right. Alexios Komnenos was the Byzantine emperor who was also part of the First Crusade. Okay. So, okay, this is more on the Crusade. I'm a decent enough yeah. piece. It's not going to win, but it's decent enough, you know. Right, quite a common theme on this one by someone whose actual actual name on Twitter is a typical Reddit analyst, which already <laughs> I, I appreciate that immediately. And then, in keeping with being a typical Reddit analyst, it's a very low quality image. He's just taken an image of what I think is supposed to be like that Warhammer 40k. It's the like heresy or whatever the fuck, the okay. chaos heresy, isn't it? Yeah, so I don't know enough about Warhammer lore to say exactly what this is, but the concept is is that the Space Marines are fighting the forces of chaos here. So TSM is represented by the forces of chaos, and and we are the uh, the Space Marines. Yes, we're we're basically just doing it for the Emperor for everything right, whatever that would actually mean in an esports. Who the fuck knows in that scenario? But I listen. That's actually that was a pretty common theme. It's just that unfortunately, a lot of the people who did it. This is bizarre, by the way. Didn't put a lot of effort in, which makes no sense because the whole thing about Warhammer is you'll be spending like fucking 25 minutes painting that shit. Like you're just going super deep on that normally. Like why are you just putting no effort in the actual image to win money? You do that for free. What the fuck? Right, this is one where this is again meme format. So it's on your phone where you can get some sort of a thing. And it's, it's a routine that they've coded in. So what happens is when you say, and this was by... In silico tactics, when you say, Alexa, someone has proof that there is a conflict of interest, Alexa will, and then you can add the following actions. TSM fans, turn on 100% simp. <laughs> that already, I already knew it was going to be fun once I saw it there, right? Then it goes, set blame to 10. <laughs> say, it's not hard to be a dick. And play, it's because I'm female equals in, e in, oh, in eSports card. Which, let's be real, those are that does actually feel like that was the subroutine run by Lena once this emerged. So, I agree. I agree. <laughs> right, actually, I think what we'll do for this one is we won't show all of them. Because basically what this guy did was everyone knows the very famous anime Death Note. And he took that, listen, it obviously had a good theme here because he made it career death mode. <laughs> and then the theme of the story basically is, I'm like Light Yagami, but in this case, I get this career death note. And he already has me like killing other people's careers before. I think I kill all the like TSM junglers or something. And then he basically makes it so that like Loco is whatever, what, like Ryuk, I think was the name of the character. The one who was like the fucking... Shaningen or whatever the fuck they were called, those like demon creatures the, that had the, the God of Death. Yeah, the something God. like that. So anyway, yeah. what we do is I won't show them all, but I'll show that he made it very legit. Like he did the whole Death Note here, and then he shows the first art and the art on this and the actual attention to the story. It's a nine-page comic, and so again, it'll be in the zip. We'll make a zip file at the end that everyone can get of all these images. He also did an imger with all these, and I'll just I'll show you a little bit of it. Like he just made it straight fire, and all you need to know is this. 
I actually worried about one element of this particular comment, which is because he made Ry- Ryuk loco, he obviously, in keeping with the theme of, of uh, loco, made it so that the character had a lisp, right? And since it's a comic, you very much see the lisp. Now, that could be very, very, like, you could play that so mean and be really horrible to loco. But actually, because he just did it to be, like, thematically consistent, loco himself actually commented on the tweet thread of this and basically just said, like, wow, like, this is amazing. Like, you caught all my mannerisms. And in fact, I looked back and that's the other thing. He tried to do a lot of, like, the weird sort of pauses that loco does. And obviously, loco has always was tried to have like fucking anime hair like that so i actually think local was loving it believe it or not i thought also the attention to detail on me and like that winter coat i used to wear is like straight on he's like fucking nailed it on this one this is I, i've got to say right now i'm biased but this is one of the ones i think is going to be one of the winners like it's going to be top three i think it's I mean, too it's good so funny because the level of references here because it shows you like finding the death note and then experimenting with it and the first one you put in there is link from cl there you go Causes him to write the Dunzo. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And you're just like shit. That I, I, you know, you're like I didn't mean to like ruin his career. And then you use it on Riot Light, which is amazing. Like just the whole like also the the sort of like light Riot Light versus like yes. Light Yagami reference is like super on point. Um, but I the end is really the really the end is really like you put Trindamir in there. <laughs> <laughs> or you put Reggie in there. You put Reggie in there. The Trindamir is like posting <laughs> on Reddit. So like basically they managed to like put all of the scandals, like the stupid yes. shit that's happened over the years into this one thing, which is absolutely amazing. And it just keeps on going. But like <laughs> the best part is like at the end, right? Because you drop it and yes. Lena picks it, picks it up and then writes her own name. <laughs> <laughs> That was actually the funniest part, I agree. That is actually amazing. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Because like, obviously she wouldn't know what it was for necessarily, would she? She just write to her name and not know. So anyway, yeah. So, it's really good. Right, this next one is an example of the sort of meme that you will not have seen me retweet. Because even though it's funny, listen, in the modern political climate we live in, I cannot endorse a meme in which I am strangling a TSM fan set with a shirt that says Bear Life on, even though it's clearly supposed to be me as the Kobe jersey on. He's done a likeness of me. And I do appreciate, though, in the background, he's taken that image of the infamous image where Loco and Reggie were trying to wait for their season five Worlds group and they thought they got the good one. And that's the moment when they're like, what? When they get put in the group of death. <laughs> I just think this one lacks consistency because I don't like I I like the background, but it doesn't necessarily have the two images don't align in my mind. I'm also not directly trying to kill TSM fans. Basically, I'm just sort of like I'm more on like a Nikido or Judo tip. It's like they're using their own force against themselves by attacking <laughs> me. I'm not doing that. <laughs> they're doing it. Governor. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. This is one where this was by uh so sabbath leon and it's one where again he's gone with sort of like a weird sort of hybrid of a stained glass style of us as crusaders and then he actually on twitter put some sort of text that was like i think it was the text from like fucking the end of uh avengers end infinity war where it was like you know the one that was like oh and i will look upon a grateful universe some shit like that you know whatever he says at the end when he does the old snapperoony so like, I get the premise. It's Listen, it's not going to win, but it's decently enough ed- executed, I thought. Not that many to go now, by the way, guys. We get, we're we definitely in the home stretch now. Right, this next one is a straight-up meme. It's one you've already seen the format of before, but it is fucking funny. Do you want to read this one out? I like this. <laughs> so, uh, basically, yeah, it's just the, the Discord messages at first with TSM demonstrating a potential conflict of interest, giving TSM a light kick. And then Tia, Lena comes in and just completely just does a, like a, a neck breaking a suplex, move, yeah. a suplex that no one wants to start on. <laughs> Cause that's the idea. It's like, it's already, you know, it was like mildly we're just shady. Standing there too, doing nothing. Yeah. Like just watching it. <laughs> like it was obviously mildly shady, but then the joke is that like, we didn't even do off the shit. She really just did run in and just body bag the whole TSM all just herself. Like we didn't even make that happen. It just, it's just an amazing piece of grace from the Lord. So that again, just in the very much in the meme wheelhouse, but funny one. I thought I saw I thought I thought it was funny enough. This is another one I have to say I thought was a strong contender. This this might be a potential winner. This is the one where it's me and Monty as Crusaders, 
And then we have the Summoning Insight banner, which by the way, he's even used the font art style that we famously used for Summoning Insight. And then you've got what I'm going to assume are sort of holy water TSM tiers. <laughs> that you're Because again, you notice they always make you the cleric or priest. That's like, that is your function yeah, within this premise. I'm always like some fucker with a broadsword or like some sort of knave with two little swords. You know, I notice this is, very, this is this has told us a lot about the psyche of our fans, no, hasn't I, it? I, I either have a bow or I am a, I like some sort of cleric. Yeah, this was a very good one. Though. I mean, even, first of all, the likenesses are good. The art styles. I actually think everything about this is pretty fire. I, I yeah, like this one. It's a good one. Let me see what that one. Oh, that was by Greg three four one one three six seven eight. Because listen, fair enough. At least you've you've men you've you've really played into the wheelhouse of you are an internet user when your name <laughs> is that. Like, <laughs> let me guess, every other Greg taken except like fucking. Three million of them or whatever. <laughs> right, Monty, this is the one I was referring to before when I said you get into territory, which is absolute meme gumbo. This is just, it's like, it's just, it's not even really clever. It's just a mishmash of stuff. So this one, there's so much going on here. You want to pick some things out? Sure. Um, so it's the, so first off, this is already like a combination of the, this is fine dog and the fire combined with the dog poker one. So it was yes. already sort of dogs playing poker. Yes, exactly. Um, but I mean, I like the fact that you, it's you from the esports awards with your journalist of the year. And Travis Gafford has like put his own. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's never actually won it for people who don't know. So yeah, that's, that's listen, I will say this, that's mean in its own right, but it's mean to Travis, so that's actually fine. Like, that's within, actually, the permissible limits, you know? It's not mean to any of the central people in the story. I also like the way Riot is just the dog just sleeping, just like, they just don't give a fuck what's happening here. True, and I love that uh, they're, Lena and Doublelift are passing confidential information with Dardock's face on the playing cards as if they're playing with Dardock, and uh pokemane is somehow like scandalized by what's going on in the background and then monty's classic picture is on the dartboard with a load of darts <laughs> thrown right into the face of it so there's a lot going on in this one listen and then obviously reggie's just going this is fine this is which is which by the way is essentially what reggie did like that's that's also by the way loki one of my favorite parts of the story is that every time i thought like, you have to understand, when you're game planning for someone and you know someone's going to battle with you and they're going to come back at you and you're going to say, like when I did that banner with Shaq, you have to obviously try and think in your mind like, what kind of thing might they say to me or what angle would they take. One angle I never expected at all was the notion that they would go with the angle of like, initially not knowing that they'd even done anything wrong. So that's why this all happened is because she rushed to Reddit and was just like, I don't know why you got, what you're not. I mean, I've talked about a lot of private things around. They're like, what? <laughs> like she didn't say literally a lot of private things, but you know, like she, that was the gist of it. It's like, like this is the craziest, like, like you're indicting yourself. Like, you know, you know why they invented the fifth amendment? Like the, you need to look that up. You need to very much plead that. Like yeah, that could save you right now. Cause you're wrecking yourself. We didn't even bring that out of you. You just offered it for no reason. It's I just remember, I just remember like, when I when I first was sent that link from the stream and then I messaged you with it and then I was just sitting there watching the rest because I was there like, like while the Reddit post like started oh, happening okay. and I was just sitting there I was like it just keeps getting worse and I was like I, I was just sitting there I'm like okay I'm not going to say anything because I hope that this just keeps getting more dumb as time goes on and if I start saying things then it's going to stop them from doing it it was pretty funny oh no listen mate it definitely plays into that classic advice I'm trying to think. I th I can't remember if it's a quote. I think it's a Napoleon quote. That one that says, like, when your enemy is in the midst of making a mistake, do not interrupt him. Like that, it's definitely in that wheelhouse, isn't it? It's like, listen, let's just let the let's see how this play out first, Monty, before we before we go on this one. And then they made about five critical errors right after that. So. <laughs> Again, listen, that, that like, I'm sorry to ex gam kid. There's zero chance you're going to win from that, but you did bring a, like, a small chuckle. You know, you did. And I also appreciate that you at least put quite a lot of different... You stacked a lot of memes, basically. Now, listen, again, 
there's a lot of pers- there's a lot of subjective opinion in appreciation of art, Monty. But I think this one is fucking straight fire because this is one right. where it's me as a crusader, like a real Norman crusader. This is the era when they would make these images and the tapestries and stuff. And so it's all it's all even accurate as well, except for the fact that like a Norman crusader would be French. But whatever, we'll forgive that. And it, like the art style, the way if if people know the, the handwritten books where they would do the like the first letter would be extremely stylized because you start it right. off super sick. This is fucking amazing. And then it's got little right. details. Like in the background, they're passing that TSM banner between them, the people in the top right. Like this is actually very well done. This is just obviously you'll notice it's it's a man, a woman, and another man, which is obviously supposed to be Reginald, Lena, and Double Lift, you yes. know. And but again, we talked about this is again uh, a Tantalus on Twitter. So he did a bunch of these. And this is in a completely different style from the other ones. That's more like a classical piece. And you have the the crossed keys of Peter there, which are the keys to the kingdom of heaven, like floating over your shoulder. Um, I think it's, I think this is fantastic. It also just shows this guy's like level of knowledge of uh, like that time period and everything sure. like that. So I appreciate I think this that. was one of the strongest entries. Yeah, this was really, really good. I mean, and you we're also discounting the fact that he did the coloring book. He did the four horsemen one. Uh, he did the chess one. He did all of these. And if you look at all of the different styles he uses, it's amazing. All right. The next one is by Kaiser Poppy. And this is basically the two of us on some sort of thrones. Like one thing I like is yours is sort of almost like the holy throne. You know, you are like the sun. And I, and I am just like, I'm like some shit out of that movie Legend or something. They're just the evil guy. Like I'm just, and my expression even is I'm just tormenting TSM people below, which is obviously, you know, TSM's recording Lena and Double Lift, I assume. And then if you look on the right, my chair also has my YouTube play button and Twitter badge. <laughs> this one, the thing about this one was it's like a legit painting. So I I actually like the the different use of colors and stuff. It's not the greatest painting ever, but I appreciate like you went with your own thing. Like this, this was one where they tried to be a bit more creative, I think. Right, this next one I'm going to say right now was one where there is potential veto power, but I just wanted to show Monty it because really it's so, funny. just I as a funny, funny image, it's so stupid and funny that like, what I appreciate again, and this is the key detail to understand, is they've, I think they've actually done a good job of skirting being offensive and obnoxious yeah. and just kept it just within that because listen, again, well, this is something made public, they, but they've kept, they've made it, like they've made the joke, the joke has an essence to it. It's not for no reason. Well, it's also the fact that it's supposed to be in the style of like a trashy romance novel. Yes. So it's it's just like trashy enough, but I love the fact that it's called Conflicting Interests and it. <laughs> the tagline is, this is so perfect for this genre. It's good, isn't it? There was enough distance until there wasn't. <laughs> it's just so good. Because <laughs> if people remember, again, one of the unexpectedly most funny parts of that actual Reggie twit longer was where he expressed that he thought that there was enough space between Double of Delina in TSM, even though this is classic Reggie who hasn't fought on different levels, they're literally logistically wasn't enough space between them reggie like that's the best part of that comment so that's why that line is straight fire there was enough distance until there wasn't and then obviously the part that's a little bit mean but he's done it just to get the the tsm part out is it's called the tremendous seductive matron and then i just also love like like listen if anything he's made reggie look cool but he also is sort of on like some simp tip there or something like <laughs> <laughs> and Double F's just the bad boy because they've taken that image of him where he's sticking his tongue out. He's got a leather fucking jacket on with TSM emblazoned on it. Slapped over the Team Liquid logo, you'll notice. Oh, I didn't actually notice that, but yeah, that's even better. Because the best part about that is that he just instantly came over, didn't he? So he's just, it's the same jacket he's just put the TSM logo on. And that was by Evil Cookie. That's like, just for a fun meme, that was one of the better ones, I think. That was certainly up there. Right, this is another one where we're going with religious theme here. So what I appreciate about this is, first of all, again, purely as a metaphor, he's used the theme of the, the Crusades. So obviously we're on the side of the English and this side, all the, the the Christians. And on the other side, presumably the Saracens, just because they were the natural enemies. You have Reggie, you have Lena. And then this is my favorite part. 
I also appreciate people who did this, who use TSM. And remember, in the modern day, for people who don't know, this is one thing I hate about companies. TSM doesn't mean Team Solo Mid anymore, guys. That is no longer what it means. It's TSM Company in the same way as Team WE doesn't mean World Elite because this is what fucking companies do. So instead, when you make it so it's just a bunch of letters with no meaning, you have just opened... I would tell you as a meme advisor, you have opened the door to a world of hurt there because anyone can take... <laughs> exactly. You have opened the Pandora's box of memes there because they can do whatever the fuck they want. So what I love is this, to make the theme work, he's made TSM in the top right hand corner mean truth surely matters. And that is what I would say. Does it not matter? Is truth not what this was all about, guys? This is a Photoshop too, but it's funny. So this is one by another well-known artist on Twitter. It is the one by I Eat Tom Kench, a girl called Sophia, who famously originally came along as a fan of G2 and did a lot of art there. And obviously they like helped to promote her content. And this is one where, again, it's a real painting. And the thing is, because the first image is so big and detailed, she also made like smaller, ver like cross, like cutouts of it that you could zoom in and see the detail of. So when you initially look at it, there's a lot going on there. But basically, as you'll see in the other images, you have Lena, who actually is looking really classy here. The middle look fucking awesome. She's in sort of like a, a, a dress, a, a gown sort like of. A gown. Yeah, and she's leading Doublelift, who, by the way, has that perfect Doublelift expression when he's really <laughs> surprised on his face, where he's looking like... You know, when he's like, pretend like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, because it is, you have to understand, at his heart, Doblis is very, it, as much as he's being portrayed as this toxic character, he's also such an innocent fucking he's naive. He's very human. naive. Yes. He's very naive. And, he, you know, he's holding his briefcase just full of TSM money or like whatever they've nicked there. And then in the third one, you see, it's me and you. So I'm like sort of some kind of, like, like this guy, I'm, I would almost say like a Roman general or something. I'm on a horse, rearing up doing the full cry with my flailing thing. And then what I love is, this is where people actually, to be fair, they probably Google image search it, but they at least for a moment made me think that we are way more famous than we think we are. We're definitely not, by the way. Because what she's done here is, because again, Saracens obviously were an element of the crusade, she's cleverly taken that Monty, when he went to Morocco, posted a yes. picture like this, where he had like a, a headdress on. And she's taken that and made it so he's kind of like a Saracen warrior. And then he's holding out a mic to kind of represent, you know, the angle of media or whatever. So uh, there's a lot going on in this one. But again, I thought this was a very good one. Yeah, yeah. I, and that is, I took a bunch of pictures of, uh, and it was like my profile picture in, of me from Morocco. Because like, I actually like wearing turbans because they're very practical. I was out in the, in the desert mountains for like a week. And it's very practical wear, which is why people wear it out there if you're, if you're out in that environment. So I was loving it. But yeah, I think it's a it's a nice touch for sure. Also, just in general, I eat Tom Kench's like her art is is really good, and she does a lot of really cool art for sure. For Legends. Right, this one is by Sam H Designs. It's just a simple picture where he's taking like an old. It looks to me like it's like a twenties era sort of like image, and then what's good is. They've taken the angle where obviously, actually, maybe this is from like World War One or something. They've taken it where it's like the idea is this is propaganda. You're going to yes. say what you what you what's going to make you join the war is what's going to happen when your kids say to you, "Daddy, what did you do during the war?" You can't just say, "Well, I just sat home because I was scared." Right. So in this scenario, it's me, and then obviously my kids are just asking me, like, "What did you do in the TSM war?" And it's like, "Well, let me tell you a story." Like, you know. <laughs> so it's basically it's just a, it's all it's all they've done by the way is just Photoshop one picture of me onto it, but this. It just shows how effective and TSM logo, but it shows how if you actually nail the execution and the theme, it can be effective. Like, I thought this was a fun one. This is I'm surprised there wasn't more propaganda, honestly, because it's pretty. Yeah, there fun. wasn't many of those, was there? Like, for example, I'll tell you what blows my mind. How was there not everyone now, because you're all noobs, is going to think you mean Uncle Sam? How was there not the Lord Kitchener one of like. In, like, you know, England needs you or what, the king needs you. The one where it's like, instead of Uncle Sam needs you, it was actually from the British one of Lords of Lord Kitchener, who was like a guy in the First World War, where it was like, you know, the king needs you to sign up now to the army. And he's pointing at the screen. Like, that's such a famous propaganda image, at least in Britain. That I'm amazed someone didn't think to do that. Like Monty, like that, like, you know, we need you for the TSM Holy War or something. No one actually did that angle, bizarrely. This was the closest we came. This is another one where it's such a big image. I would encourage people to actually download this and look at it. But it's another one where they had their own style. So this is one where it's like when people do an art comic style that's like 
Like this style was where it's, you're not like the best artist, but you've gone the really like gothic, grim horror comic style approach. It's really here. cool, actually. It's very and detailed. The I theme mean, the- has these lords in this one. Like, first of all, again, have you noticed the trend I pointed out earlier, which maintains everything where Richard Lewis is an evil villain type character? Looks straight fire. Like he looks fucking sick there in that <laughs> bottom right hand corner. He looks so evil, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> And then what are we saying there? Like, because we're saying some like ridiculous shit about like, plague or something. Well, what I love about so the theme of this one is like, uh, so first off, Lena, as you can see, they've they've portrayed her as like some sort of goddess of hell on this chariot <laughs> that's drawn by like three devil dogs with huge bats. Some cerebuses or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's it's three different dogs instead of having a three headed dog, but yeah. And I think I like how you're standing there again, me as sort of the cleric and you as the warrior. I only know that one must do what can be what can, what one can to cease being plague stricken. That's the only <laughs> way in which we can hope for some peace. But I say, or failing that, a decent death. And so I think the thing is, it's like, so you see Lita and like the hordes are pouring out. And uh, and I'm saying, so it's you and me again at the bottom. And I thought Owl was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, here we go again. And Richard Lewis is just sitting there just when I thought I was out. Why? And then this is, I assume this is Richard's thoughts. Why always me? I didn't want to be a part of this. And then it's you and me talking to him. You went through hell and back, Richard, countless times. <laughs> you explored darkness where everyone <laughs> put their candle, afraid of what they might see, holding it too far out of their path. Why you? Why me? I don't know. And then you're saying there are pestilences and there are victims on this earth, and it's up to us, so far as possible, not to join forces with the pestilences. And then Richard finally getting convinced, I guess, <laughs> to join us. Fukum, which is exactly what Richard <laughs> says. Course, That's yeah. super funny. <laughs> Fukum, every single one, wherever, whatever, let's roll. There are jaws left to break. <laughs> and also, by the way, this is another element where you know this person's next level. This was by someone called, by the way, this is like, oh, there was someone called Vandal with a four. And they've also put the detail where, like, Lena in her god form also represents simultaneously, like, like comedy and tragedy or drama or whatever it is. Like, she simultaneously represents both with those classic masks from, you know, like the Greek period. Yeah. So that's a little detail I love when they sprinkle on. And again, as you say, the fact that not only is Richard, like, it's like the way he's, like, unwillingly brought in. But then at the end, he's just like, fuck him, I'm in. Like, <laughs> Which is exactly what happened, too, because Richard at first was just, like, it was yeah. the same thing with me. It was the same thing with me where, like, you know, I had said my piece about how I thought it was a conflict of interest and she, she could recuse ourselves. And then you go on this whole thing with like the TSM like holy war and then when the video came out of her with the Dardock thing I was basically like all right slap a tabard on me and let's go on the crusade <laughs> <laughs> I was like well I'm all in now boys and yeah. I think Richard Richard was the same way he was like eh. and then he's like shit <laughs> Basically, if people don't know, because this because this actually emerged over a few weeks when I was doing all these different shows, when I did By the Numbers, my CSGO show with Richard, he referenced it a little bit because what he was annoyed at initially was just like the stupid backlash against me. And like, he couldn't believe people were saying it wasn't a conflict of interest. Like, that, was, that was already like pushing him almost to breaking point. But all that kept him at the time from not involving himself, which he said on the show, you can go watch at the time, was that in light of the actual real life horror story that has at times been Doublelift's family life. He didn't want to like yeah. bring Doublelift personally into it. So his thought was like, as long as it stays just a hypothetical conflict of interest and it's some issue off in League of Legends where I'm working in CSGO anyway, like I'm not going to involve myself. Like I'm just going to sort of say, you know what, Doublelift, you can sort of get a pass for this. Like just because of you, I'll forget the rest of it. But I said to him on the show, and this is key, this is where you have to know like the dynamics of certain relationships. I just essentially said to him, all right then, so what would be the line then? What would be the line at which they would cross where you'd have to get involved? And he did, he just at the time said, because it was a rhetorical question, he just sort of said, yeah, you've got a point there. You know, I guess if it goes further. And then basically when we were doing Summoning Insight, he just straight up messaged us like, just bring me on for the last part. <laughs> and it's like, right, well, he's in now. And then, and then he, was just, he was just in on the whole, he wanted in. He wanted, it's like, well, it's like, it's like that Mon, like Rick and Morty shit, isn't it? Like, God damn it, I'm in. It's like, <laughs> I do. I think this is like such a. This is one of the best example. ones. This might be uh, one of the winners. Yeah, this is an excellent portrayal of like Richard in this situation, and I just love the Fulcum. It's just like that's yes. great characterization. 
Right, we're almost at the end. Now, this is one where it was a two-part. There's two elements to it. And they've done it so it's like, again, it's mixing together like crusade themes with almost like, I feel like this almost has a feel of like, you know, a thousand and one Arabian Nights to it. Like, yeah, like one thing I love is like the lighting on this first image, the one where it's like double lift holding Lena and they're looking out at this army of all the people. Like, this is actually like, it, it captures like a fucking atmosphere. This is a, this is a mood. So, this one. yeah, it's just by Vavatar. Um, and I remember she said, I think it's a, she, uh, she said that she spent 50 hours Holy on moly. these two I illustrations. So there's actually two. Um, but I mean like the level of detail is just insane. Like, first off, I like the fact that Lenovo is on fire in the bottom right corner sure. <laughs> and TSM, but like the level of detail in the sky and the stars and like doing all of these individual soldiers in the army. I mean, this is like really epic in terms of its scope. And then also I love the blending of colors and like the use of traditional media. It's extremely well composed. I think it's such a dynamic picture. I love this one. Yeah, I thought this was a very cool one. Again, it's also another example to harken back to what I said earlier. It's not like this is the craziest level of art skill, but just perfectly executed. Like they nailed everything they were going for in this. And like I say, they create an atmosphere. That's what's cool about it. Like you actually feel like this is a real thing. Obviously it isn't. It's just some fucking shit that we, we've made up to, because people were mean to us, but I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> and then the, the next one too was also by Vavatar and shows sort of the alternate perspective. So the other thing I enjoyed was you had kind of like the perspective from the castle and then you have the perspective from the people at like sieging the castle where it's you and me rallying and like the tower is crumbling and it's from the perspective of someone who's behind the shield yeah it's it's really i think it's cool I think it's really cool right this was the guy who already did one earlier it was alessandro migne and he was the guy if you remember earlier who did that like hand drawn one where i was like like what the fuck i can't believe they actually did it oh well like i fucking told you so that one like he's done one here where it's like a classic like beat em up style screen loading screen so if you imagine like tech and tag or something but in this scenario what i love about this is like first of all he's used a lot of classic images but it got he's captured all the likenesses but in his own art style like it's weird but like for example like reggie again looks weird but in a cool way on this one it's, the, it's loading the tsm holy wall it's a game that has to load so i guess like it's like a playstation game or something you know you've got your like classic i think that was ms i was that was first all stars maybe it was all stars 2014 where you had that maybe that yeah i don't on. know i don't know which one it was, was the one if i think if i'm right it was the one where you were like no 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 to like quick shot <laughs> yeah, or whatever yeah. i think it was like wasn't that the one yeah. or was it was yeah, I think that was that was the world's that was a world's, I think. But yeah. Um, I like the fact that he used like the League of Legends weapons from the characters like the Garen Sword. I, I ah, think that right, yes. I remember what he said was that he was he was trying to represent the conflict. So I think it's like Katarina's um uh, daggers and garen's sword because they're sort of like star-crossed lovers right they're on the opposite sides in, right okay yeah in in the and they're opposite sides in the lore so trying to put some nice details in there for sure i think this is a this is a cool cool idea yeah, this is well done right here's the perfect thing monty so we started we had like art we had all something what's good is just by pure coincidence we're ending on a meme and it is a classic meme format but it is perfectly executed because the meme is the classic one where there's a boss who's really angry and he's in a meeting and you've all seen this one before and we all know the joke format goes the boss says something and then he's asking for suggestions the first two people always say something stupid the third guy who's just almost like fuck this shit just says whatever you really would say and then famously gets thrown out the window because that's the most reasonable <laughs> suggestion so give it give us what the premise is here and why he gets thrown out with what do we do about this dardock problem answer on reddit make a twit longer hire a pr agent that handles it professionally <laughs> and then the joke is them. obviously that guy gets thrown out of like the tsm tower or whatever the fuck because like that's the stupidest part is again this is why esports is such a fucking clown fiesta it's like these are remember these are organizations that that forbes article was rating at like 200 million dollar valuation but they don't even have a pr person who's like first of all can handle it directly and could be the one that speaks instead of a twit longer but even beyond that isn't just scrambling like uh please mr reginald could you 
you not release the next thing? Like, you know, like it's like the successive blows that they release, like one after another. And what I love, by the way, is if anyone saw it, because I retweeted it, there was a random kid, it wasn't anyone famous at all, who just did his own version of a twit longer, which is how TSM should have handled it, where they were like, you know, we apologize unquestionably yep, for what we've done. We will, of course, you know, like reduce leaders' impact of the League of Legends. And she basically, he basically put what any PR agent would have written, which would have actually solved half the things. And here's the spoiler. Even if the PR guy was lying, like, again, in good faith, we have to, like, accept certain elements of it. So, like, they actually could have gotten out of this so easily, but they didn't, of course. So now here's the thing, Monty. Like I said, there's a lot of good ones here. So we have to narrow it down to some winners here. Well, who, okay, so here's the question. So there's, 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 a couple, there's a couple things also. There were a couple musical entries okay. that that we do need to link below. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, there was a, there was like, a, there was a song that was pretty funny. And then there was also a, like an orchestral arrangement that I thought was pretty amazing. Um, so those were two that I think we have to talk about. And I don't know. Do you want to, do you want to pronounce winners here or do you want to confer and then announce them on Twitter would be my question. Yeah, cause... let's do that actually. Cause that, cause that way as well, I don't know, maybe people can react as well and then we'll, we'll figure out who we're going to win. Cause I agree. It's there's so many that's like, it's hard to pick. Cause I also don't want it to be like recency bias, like the last cool one. Yeah. Wins. So yeah, maybe we should think about some more. So we've just presented them initially yes. here. Yeah. Let's present them and then we'll put the musical selections below and then we'll put a zip, uh, a link to a zip file with all the art. And then you guys can give feedback and then we'll confer among ourselves. Cause honestly, like this is the first time I've seen them all in one setting. So I kind of want to go through them again yes. and rank them before I just make a, a hasty decision. Cause there's like thousands of dollars here. And also I think we need to decide uh, if we're indeed doing the fourth and fifth place ones and adding a little bit. I've got money. an idea for that. Maybe what we'll do is this. We'll do a top three. Again, if we end up like really being torn, we could do another one. But maybe what we'll also do in the spirit of goodwill is maybe we'll have one that's like a people's choice one. So one that we didn't pick, you know, if enough people go crazy yeah, for, yeah. maybe that one gets a little prize of its own. Could be money, could be some piece of memorabilia or something. We'll do something like that. And also just in general, guys, like it's been really fun to have this art contest. But part of this also is that Thorne and I really like to use community artists for things. If you watched, for example, the Flashpoint uh, hype video that we did, uh, we commissioned a community artist to do that. I've commissioned community artists to make Twitter profile pictures of me. Uh, I, including a Tantalus, I have commissioned art from him. So like if you guys send us this stuff even if you don't win or if you do win, uh, we really like to see it because we will use you for other things in the future. Thorin famously commissions art. Like the last one you did was the one of Kelsey Moser for your sure. latest article. So we do like to see all your stuff regardless. And and there we do really value uh, paying you money for stuff in the future. So send us, send us your shit is what I'm saying. 